Good morning, this is Kara Coffey in the ministry, and I'm Kevin Yamar. So I guess I did decide to retain my old self. And what I'm about to read and study and put up on the blog is another part of letters Elizabeth Barrett and Robert Browning wrote to each other continues because I committed a long time ago to poetry and sketching and my sketching I'm right now deciding just this moment is going to take the form of bookwork. I have now four documents that are rotating and the reason that I rotate them is because I am completely in 100% in solidarity and yet and counterclockwise to American society. I am not a fascist. I successfully left the world that is, lost everything and everyone, established a kingdom for Judah in the New Jerusalem surrounding Austin, Texas. And here I am, Lord in all capitals, send me. And so I have been sent, and my cat is napping on a Monday morning. <laughs> and I voted already. And I'm going to stay away from social media while y'all vote and scream at each other. About how right you are and how wrong. Your neighbor and even the people in your home remain. And in that place, you can have nothing to do with the New Jerusalem, even if you're blue, blue wave voting. Because the New Jerusalem isn't about time, it's about eternity. That does not mean in any way, shape, or form that the King and I do not speak about time. I'm just making it clear before an election because if there's one thing I am not going to do, it is repeat the history of the stress in my life when Donald Trump became the criminal president, which means he wasn't the president, upon which the Republican Party is basing a tremendous web of lies in the United States of America. And Russia decides to unleash bots everywhere on social media. I block and move on. It's very easy to see fakes. I'm even a small account. Block me, call me a bot. I don't care. I haven't been murdered in my own home like uh, Nancy Pelosi's husband almost was, Paul Pelosi. I will say there are no Republicans Fascia Christians. Any of you. Still a part of that paradigm. In the New Jerusalem. Period. <laughs> You're not in the New Jerusalem. Period. So it is one of the things that we work with. Now, let's go back to my life ministry and say, Kara is disciplined yet again. I am accountable to the three oldest males in my family. They are humble men. They know we need to move away from the past. They know my power. They respect that more than has been happening in the past. I'm not gonna talk about that. I wanna show you something before I move on with Elizabeth Barrett, who is leading us right now and channeling her. And listening to my father, I know what my father would want me to do in this time. To be happy for myself. And that is to understand the balance between men and women. Women and men. And so, therefore, my men can trust me. If I have to pop out, pick up the swords that I've used for years, and, and keep going, I will let Curtis know. 
I will require that they stay away from that side of me. It is Tara. And Tara, by and large, is learning to stay away from my nurture places. That means I walk into your church and I ain't the lady that reads poetry. I'm not going to give you any physical precursors like wearing black. I've done it before, particularly going into churches because you people demand agreement from the king piping through my life. And he said no, and he kept saying no, regardless, so that I could have today, literally could have today, this day, you see. And that's in the Bible, go find it yourself. <coughs> <clears throat> Let me show you, this is my private journal. <coughs> <coughs> And that goes to my therapist. What I write in here is history that's real. I even have some math, and it is not going to be published. And publicly, irrational numbers and rational numbers. We need them both. All the alphabets across all the world systems, Earth core. We need them both. How do you like it that I can tell you when I'm speaking through Alpha Omega? <clears throat> that is how you move on. Okay, I'm going to read a portion. This is interesting. People back in this day, this is 1845, a Wednesday. For me, one of my two church days because I pause, I set things aside, and I listen to the God pod because that's another pastor in my life from a distance. And he went ahead in obedience to what the fuck is going on on Twitter and called himself parody, but I want you to notice something. <clears throat> You take away the accounts that can't do that for obvious reasons, I'll stay all right. And I'll wake and cover no more back up. More than it is right now. You stay away from real. Don't touch it on Twitter is my suggestion. It's just a suggestion, Twitter. I would imagine you want the platform to stay healthy regardless of all this other political bullshit going on. So that's just a suggestion from a stupid idiot who decided not to have a career that loves you anyway. Enemy, America. I'm not talking about Twitter there. <laughs> no. Twitter's not my enemy. America is. All right. So what I noticed is they actually journaled their letters before they sent them. And I sent them to each other. And this, this was common practice, I would imagine. Now, I'm sorry, y'all. But the English teacher inside of me <laughs> is going to tell you, I wish to God, in all capitals, that we would go back to this kind of gentle life. Even CEOs of companies sit the fuck down for an entire week and write in your own hand a letter to someone that you love that you have distanced because you are guilty of how you've behaved. I will tell you who that's gonna be for Elon Musk, some of his children. Don't talk about it.
Isn't it beautiful to have a friend who took time to write a letter over several days and be considerate of you, whomever you are, whatever station of life. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, it is. And it's gently raining at my house. Isn't it beautiful to hear the rain? Now, <clears throat> let me read this and then I'm going to do what has happened with these letters, which is beautiful to me. It's an evolution of mine that I just love and is meaningless to this world I live in. Look at this beautiful picture. Now, isn't she beautiful? Are you gonna come sit? Okay, go ahead. She just jumped on the top of my chair. Isn't that wonderful? Now she's on the side giving me a little hug. All right, here she comes. <laughs> Seeing if she can't have a comfy place too in front of the window. I don't blame her at all. Baymax is being just a little bit on the selfish side. <laughs> oh, he's funny. Very, very funny indeed. Let's see where she decides to go. Oh, now she's doing the other thing she does. She, oh, She's the one that does it. All right, you can have the rest of my coffee. She likes my coffee and my cream and my tea, and uh, she will take sips of it. <laughs> okay, she decided to let me have the rest this time. It has to have cream in it. <laughs> so this, <clears throat> so Wednesday... August the 20th, 1845, she wrote, and then she continued to live her invalid life. I'm pretty much doing that now at this point in my life. My, my body's broken down from the ministry that I have actually done both to family and as a Trijuda elect archangel named Tara. My, my body's broken. <clears throat> and then COVID just, yes, I have long COVID symptoms. Yes, I do. So I'm going to tell you a story before I read, because this will be Friday, August 22nd, 1845, because she lived her life, and then she wrote again. And that is just the most beautiful thing. And I don't want you to think of that the wrong kind of romantic. I'm not talking about some lover in another land. I'm talking about your children. And I can't do this, and there's reasons why I can't do this. And I wanted to do this, but I can't because my life evolution outran the lies, the untruths, the hide it to protect her story that's under the surface of my life. And I'm not the only one in my family saying I'm very broken. We are doing the best we can to arise together. I want to talk to Margaret my blessed, beautiful daughter. The society destroyed my daughter, but she is strong and she's getting up, but she's having to do it as a solitary pagan, agnostic, like her mother, because y'all hit her so hard. She did do it your way, just like your, her mother did. I gave up career. She went for a career. She wanted to help. She wanted to be a part, but yet she knew she needed to earn a living for her family, for herself. And she did it all. She went through the school system and you destroyed her. And now she's in debt. And then I heard later that the very people that she was so excited about serving and she would talk to me and I was like, oh, then Margaret, I wanna go with you. Don't leave me behind. This is so beautiful what you're doing. And I, I could see her dreams coming true. And that society rejected her, her as well. There isn't anyone in our societies that 
that know how to nurture each other. They reject the most beautiful of ministers, and my daughter is one of those. But Margaret is like her mother, and her mother is like Margaret, and she did the correct thing, and she sent a letter of truth to the two oldest men in our family. She understands the concept, just like her mother, and I set up because my daughter is this courageous. She picked me up too and said, Mom, in my world of New Jerusalem, she said, Mom, remember the good parts. Come on now. And I said, Okay. And that's where we are, and we're broken. And nobody will listen to me. And so I'm having to take measures right now that just basically, I have become stoic. So let me, let me list for you as the rain continues beautifully. Let me list for you what I'm actually becoming, have become. Um, a solitary pagan, which I told everybody as that was happening. An evolutionist, a reincarnationist, an agnostic, an atheist, a stoic, altruistic. I'm not changing from this. I just adopt what I need to, to just bring peace and be peace. Hope that helps somebody out there. So Friday, two days later, she came back to the letter. I was writing you, you see, before you came, and now I go on in haste to speak off my mind some things which we are on it. Uh, some things which are on it. So that means he came and visited her, evidently. I go on, oops, and now I go on in haste to speak off my mind some things which are on it. I like that way of saying it, to speak off my mind. Uh, this is one thing Curtis and I are learning. There's some things it's better not said face to face because you do want to respect the individual. I, I taught this to us. I mentored us in this, and uh, it's, be it's better that way, not do it face to face. First, of yourself, how can it be that you are unwell again? And that you should talk, now did you not? Did I not hear you say so? Of being weary in your soul, you? What should make you, dearest friend, weary in your soul, or out of spirits in any way. Do tell me, I was going to write without a pause, and almost I might, perhaps, even as one of the two hundred of your friends, almost I might say out that, do tell me, or is it, in parentheses, which I am inclined to think most probable, that you are tired of a same life and want change? It may happen to anyone sometimes and is independent of your will and choice. You know, and I know, and the whole world knows. And, it, and would it not therefore be wise of you in that case to fold your life new again and go abroad at once? He has money and property, my love. He has the ability to do that. What can make you weary in your soul is a problem to me. You are the last from whom I should have expected such a word. And you did say so, I think. I think that it was not a mistake of mine. And you, with a full liberty and the world in your hand, for every purpose and pleasure of it? Or is it that, being unwell, your spirits are affected by that? 
but then you must be more unwell than you like to admit. And I am teasing you with talking of it, am I not? And being disagreeable is only one third of the way towards being useful. It is good to remember in time. And then the next thing to write off my mind is that you must not, you must not make an unjust opinion out of what I said today. I have been uncomfortable since lest you should, and perhaps it would have been better if I had not said it apart from all context in that way. Only that you could not long be a friend of mine without knowing and seeing what so lies on the surface. But then, as far as I am concerned, no one cares less for a quote-unquote will than I do. And this, though I never had one, in clear opposition to your theory, which holds generally, nevertheless. For a will is the common for a will in the common things of life. Every now and then there must, of course, be a crossing in vexation, but in one's mere pleasures and fantasies, one would rather be crossed and vexed a little than vex a person one loves, and it is possible to get used to the harness and run easily in it at last, and there is a side wor world to hide one's thoughts in, and quote-unquote carpet work to be immoral on in spite of Mrs. Jameson. And the word quote-unquote literature has with me covered a good deal of liberty, as you must see, real liberty, which is never inquired into. And it has happened throughout my life by an accident, as far as anything is accident. that my own sense of right and happiness on any important point of overt action has never run contrarywise to the way of obedience required of me. While in things not exactly overt, I and all of us are apt to act sometimes up to the limit of our means of acting with shut doors, and windows, and no waiting for cognizance or permission. Uh, but this, even this, my loves, this silence place has been gravely raped because you, in the privacy of your own secret place can view little girls undressing from other countries, can't you, white man of wickedness? On a lighter note, the young people have no ability to put down what is hurting their soul. On a lighter note, those, and I have two of them, almost three, making an employment out of staring at the screen, have scars in their lives because of this disconnection, though they make a, tr a good living. The society is destroying us all, though, because I have two daughters that are older and making good livings. Nonetheless, two or three, four, who don't stare at the screens and you're still destroying them. Oh, America, you are dead indeed.